to the papers uh, for consideration. I understand that the first paper uh, regarding the uh, Citizens Advisory Commission on Alternatives to Incarceration that the patron, Vice President Robinson, has requested a continuance. Yes. Okay. Uh, did she express a time frame for that? We didn't get a time frame. Okay. We'll go with the state 30 days. That without objection from the committee. Okay, great. Uh, let's see, number uh, two on the uh, agenda is to authorize the CAO for and on behalf of the City of Richmond to execute a memorandum of agreement between the City of Richmond and the Crater View Care Commission for the purpose of providing accommodations for city juvenile detainees for a period of time not to exceed 13 months. Is there anyone? Here from the administration to address this. Good evening, I'm Robin Gilmer with the Department of Justice Services. And I'm here on behalf of David Hicks, who could not be here this afternoon. And what you have before you is a paper for the city to enter into an agreement uh, with Crater and Youth in Petersburg. And the purpose is to be able to have up to four kids. At Petersburg, that will they will also provide the services, medical services, uh, and that type of thing. Uh, the goal is to uh, be able to, to use the beds as needed. So we would only pay for them when we have individuals that would be placed at that facility. Uh, the paper also talks about the option to use that facility for our circuit court girls. And so in the event that there's space available, in addition to the four beds, that we would also place our circuit court girls there. The cost uh, is in your paper uh, at 664 on a monthly basis, uh, 116 uh, is the per diem rate if those individuals have been committed to the Department of Juvenile Justice. The agreement is such that uh, we can exercise uh, an opt-out with 45 days notice. Um, and so therefore, we're looking to have this option available to us for the next 13 months until the detention facility reopens. Thank you. Do you have any uh, questions of uh members? Yes. Mr. Jewell? Um, uh, the last sentence implies that we will be reopening the uh, detention center here. Um, have we been briefed on that at all since closing? Do you want to wear of the status of the reopening and that might be how far along we are? what has to be done to get us there. I think the last update we received was in July uh, when David Hicks was here. And so I don't believe there has been an update since then. Uh, Mr. Hicks, so that's, that's why I don't know. That's why I don't know. So I'll, I'll just rather tell you time about the review of the next couple of minutes. Yes. Uh, What has necessitated additional capacity for us such that we're looking at greater new care commission? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I believe we just needed another option okay. uh, just, so, just in case. And so we didn't want to wait to when that when we needed the space that there would be nothing available at the current facility. So, so there's nothing there now? No, we just want the space available. We would only use the or, uh, use the bed as needed. So there's no charge if we don't have it. Exactly. Yeah. It's been consistent. It 
hasn't gone significantly up higher or lower. Below 40? Uh, I believe it is before. Was it before? Was it today? Did you? Yeah, it's below 40.
I may yes. uh, piggyback on that. Uh, perhaps it may even make sense to bring all of those to Charlotte's bill to Petersburg with the parental permits, uh, which might make it a bit more accessible for Charlotte. It would definitely be if Crater has the room because they operate the facility for themselves as well. So, you know, as space becomes available, that certainly could be an option. So we would not be limited to the four if space becomes available as this space is If, if space is available, right, we are committing to four, but if sp extra space becomes available, we can also negotiate that. Okay. I don't think we have much more than that at Charlottesville, four to six people. Okay. Um, thank you. Well, I guess we could ask for a, uh, a follow-up for this, possibly our uh, December meeting or Completely in place, but just a, a follow up, particularly on the transportation. Okay. Transportation of the family, and, and we'll take a look at the GRTC option as well. Any noteworthy items uh, relative to the reopening of the facility of the location? There, Mr. Hicks, that was uh, his bottom line, so to speak, was that was the goal of the administration, just to okay. have an update on that. Sure. November meeting, that would be wonderful. Okay. That will be the third Monday of the month, whatever that happens to be. I don't have a calendar here in front of me. Um, okay. Five o'clock here at the uh, police academy. It'll be November 19th. November 19th. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number three is. Uh, Oh, please do. Item three is ordinance number 2012-179 to authorize the CAO to execute a memorandum of understanding between the city, school board, the center neighborhood enterprise for the purpose of the city making a grant for the continuation of the balance free zone program at George Webb and Armstrong High School. Yes, sir. Yes. Albert Stokes, Richmond Police Department. We are entering, where we're proposing to enter our second year of city funding for the violence reduction program at George Wythe and at Armstrong. Uh, George Wythe actually has been in service for, this will be the fifth year, second year city funding, and this will be the first full year at Armstrong High School. We partner with the City <coughs> Neighborhood Enterprise out of Washington, D.C. to implement the program. It basically, the program basically serves about 200 kids in each of the uh, high schools currently. And this would just give the CAO the authority to enter the agreement. And just curious, yeah, on that note, just curious, what do they do with the kids? Uh, oh, there are various, uh, various activities. The, we have nine youth counselors at each one of the schools. The, the students and the school system have 24-7 access. During the school year, they provide assistance with, with teachers, do mediations between students, things along those lines. After school projects, including uh, uh, skill development, whether it be youth employability, tutorial programs, et cetera, and some outside field trips as well. And the number of kids is what? Last year we ended up with 196 out of, I believe, 950 at WITH. And we started in April of this past year at Armstrong, and the enrollment was up around 180 or so at the end of the school year. We projected to be near was 200. Yes, sir. Boys and girls. Boys and girls. Of all age groups, all classes. And the, the condition under which they come into the program, are they? Generally referred by either uh, Either Anger programs in the school, anger management, uh, tardiness, things along those lines. Any other questions? Uh, the uh, the youth advisors are are they?
they outside individuals or these police officers? They are they are adults outside of the police department. They go through a, a background check, fully approved by the uh, school system as well. But they are, for lack of a better term, they are youth that have been involved <coughs> in from the community and have an understanding of the students at each one of the schools. And I would say most of them are in the 24 to 28 year old range, maybe a little bit older. That makes sense. This is uh, normally here, uh, in my recollection, that when we, uh, I guess this is the memorandum of understanding versus the actual uh, appropriation of the funds, and the funds have already been appropriated. Correct. The funds are now within the first department general fund budget. All right. It's $720,000. Was that a multi year grant? That no, that is one year, two programs for this fiscal year. Okay. So we've got that already allocated. Yes, sir. Special funds budget, so. Uh, for I the general fund budget. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, right, so we'd already appropriated the money. Okay. Um, does someone graduate from this program? And I put that in quotations. Are they, uh, is it, or? Generally. Kind of an ongoing process. It's an ongoing process. Uh, when we started Armstrong, I believe the bulk of our kids last year were 10th and 11th grade. Of course, the 12th, 12th grade were on their way out. But generally, they're going to stay in the program for a couple of years or so. We also have a group with, at both schools that we target those kids coming into the ninth grade as well. We're looking at the middle school and getting uh, feedback from the teachers at the middle school level. And they refer particular kids into the program going into the ninth grade. But it's pretty much an ongoing process until graduation. And at George Wick, we've able to see, we were able to see some of those kids go from beginning to end to completion and graduation from school. Okay. And uh, would we have to report back, I guess, to this agency, the CNE, uh, as to outcomes? Or they provide, they actually do all of the reporting, provide outcomes to us. We do unannounced and announced site visits. At the, we have quarterly meetings, et cetera. They track all of the statistics and provide them to us. And they work with the school system to get some numbers as well. Very good, very good, thank you. So yes. Um, you uh, went to the place I wanted to go to in terms yes. of program evaluation and yes. statistics. And so what have been we do, and very honestly, the first um, few the years at George with alone, we did not track academics as, uh, as much because we were trying to get a foothold in to, to lower the negative incidents and the violence in the school. Over the course of the last year, we have begun to look at uh, academics more. But if I can, I'll just give you a few of the statistics that we follow. Uh, at Georgewood High School for the full year last year, there were 312 home visits with parents, uh, 102 mediations between students uh, to prevent altercations. A couple of other uh, notes here, 1,290 meetings with parents to discuss their kids and what was going, what, what's going on with them. Over 17,000 supportive conversations with students that were tracked. Um, we had, well, I'm just trying to, 3,100 hall sweeps, monitoring the halls, going through, making sure everything's okay. And that was at Armstrong, I mean, with for a full year. Armstrong from April through the end of uh, June, 43 mediations, 350 meetings with teachers, 1,100 hall sweeps, 1,200 hall sweeps things along those lines. Uh, 16 students tutored at Armstrong last year, 381 students tutored at George Wood. Things along those lines. And, and I don't have the information with me, but I do know that over the last year, as we tracked it, we did see academic improvement amongst those kids at George Wood. And then from the <coughs> prior to implementation to we, we have those stairs. 
And so do we see improvement? I mean, I hear a lot of activity. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. But in terms of reduction in terms at, of all at, the, growth, the charts, we're, okay. I mean, we're looking at 30 plus percent in negative incidents from the okay. beginning from five years ago at George with, and we track that not only from year to year, but the year prior to the program. Okay. Move to advance, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Jewell, we're going to have to have a public hearing on yep. this first. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'd like to open this up to a public hearing. Uh, is there anyone that wishes to address the committee, either for or against? Seeing uh, none, we'll bring this back to the committee to discussion, or for discussion. Bring it back to the committee now for discussion. Oh. <laughs> so. I think we've done pretty much discussion. We ain't turning away the money. Okay. Makes sense, so I'm moving to advance. Thank you. Thank you. Approval. One second. Vice President. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. New bill. Chair concurs, and we will uh, advance this forward with a recommendation for uh, approval. Uh, I believe that this can be put on the consent agenda since the money has already been appropriated. Is that am I correct in that assessment? Well, I guess I'm going to press the agenda. Mm -hmm. I would think that would be on the consent. Okay. Uh, let's see. Are, well, are we going to receive a, a, those statistics of which you just mentioned during? I'm sorry. Uh, the statistics that you just mentioned, could you forward those oh, to uh, the committee? We'll do that and I'll do the year in report. I'll forward the year in report. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Appreciate your work. Uh, Madam Clark, you can read the next paper. Item 4. Ordinance number 2012-172 to authorize the CAO to accept $67,500 from the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services and to transfer $7,500 from the Department of Justice Services account and to, pro to appropriate the total amount of $75,000 to Justice Services to establish a jail bed use plan and an alternative placement process. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Is there anyone here from the administration to uh, the This paper uh, is a grant, is a JAG grant, uh, received from the Department of Criminal Justice Services, the special funds. And the purpose of this grant uh, is based on the recommendations uh, published by the National Institute of Correction. They came to the assessment of the city of Richmond as we were beginning the discussion about the jail and what type of alternatives that would be useful for reducing the jail population. And one of the recommendations uh, was that we have one person just dedicated to focusing on the numbers. How many people are in the jail? How long they're staying in the jail? Who would be more appropriate for treatment services? Uh, who could be more appropriate for uh, other uh, community-based uh, programs? And so this person would be solely focusing on that, as well as beginning the discussion about a jail review committee. And it's very similar to the juvenile justice system with the JDI committee, and, and the group will decide together uh, the appropriate uh, placement of individuals, such as the mental health, uh, individuals with mental health, uh, those who could be managed safely in the community, but need some treatment, uh, this group will convene and make those determinations. So this grant is a two-year grant uh, with the goal of assisting the city in reducing the population at the jail. And so the funding is for a salary. And so we would renew the grant. It's, it's a one-year grant with one-year renewal. Uh, before I get too excited about the bill, uh, will this person uh, be able to uh, review those who have been sent to the jail to ascertain if they would be better served in 
substance abuse placement at home electronic monitoring so that we can divert them from, is that? The yes, that's the second part of it, the, the getting of the uh, uh, jail review committee. And so that person would be the, the eyes and ears in determining uh, who could be better fit in the community. But prior to that, we need to know who's going in there, what are some of the barriers across all of the stakeholders, uh, what, what can <coughs> assist with terms of data collection, uh, vetting it through the Community Criminal Justice Board, the City Council, just so we can all be on the same page, who is in the jail? and who needs to be in the jail and how long they're staying. So this person would be totally focused on that initiative. Yes. Um, hopefully it will be <coughs> not, that it will not take very long to collect the information. I'm assuming we can do some data dumps to prepare the mm -hmm. profile for whoever's down there. I mean, I'm excited about that other end, but we now have somebody who can really take a look and start getting folks into appropriate settings uh, for treatment and care. Uh, so, okay. And so, you know, it doesn't mean that it's going to take an entire year to do one versus the other. Those are the two projects that we want to do. So as soon as we're able to get those data dumps, get them housed, get them analyzed, we can certainly move forward with the next edition. Thank you. Yeah. The, uh, the data collection is, of course, important. Um, but just Monday night, we had uh, we had a gentleman come down and talk about his son, who uh, has had mental illness issues for quite some time and is consistently picked up by a uh, irregular beat cop, who, for almost any reason, is locking them up in jail. Uh, how influential will this individual uh, be uh, uh, separating wheat from the chaff now, particularly when it comes to mental illness and uh, uh, where one might expect uh, uh, a changed disposition in some way or form or fashion. Uh, this kid uh, takes his shoes off and walks up the street, leaves his shoes on the sidewalk and he gets a ticket for, uh, for literally goes to jail. <laughs> Let him get a ticket, he goes to jail. Uh, a, a lot of that goes on and I'm just curious to know uh, uh, how instrumental would this individual be in separating those situations and, 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 and offering or influence and adjustment. And part of that data collection would include just that with other stakeholders department court system with that particular individual we will look at the multiple admissions in the jail and when is it occurring and how long is it staying as a result of that admission and so we would sort of compile your know, profile of individuals like that and see where can we intervene the earliest point so it could have been that with the uh, CIT program that we have crisis intervention team that that person could be diverted to a community-based sure. option versus going to the jail. And so part of that jail review committee would also would be looking at those types of situations. Uh, I guess I'm just at the water's edge of my real question, and that is how influential would that person be data in hand to make recommendations for new and different dispositions? That person will be working for uh, David Dix who's also staffed to the Community Criminal Justice Board, and those recommendations will go through that pipeline on up to the administration and city council. Okay. Council doesn't release it. The court's got to release it. And uh, the Well, is now there are, I'm sorry to cut you off, in terms of the, of the mental health. I mean, we currently have the mental health docket. Uh, we currently have mental health uh, alternative sentencing. And then we have the crisis stabilization. Now, for that particular individual that came on Monday, I mean, we could certainly see if he was ever on the mental health docket. We just started that last year. So it may be that he had not gone through that pipeline. Because what we hope to do there is get people as soon as possible, because we don't want people to languish in the jail untreated. So it's possible that that individual has not 
been placed on the mental health docket. And that comes from the general district court judge. They would have to actually transfer the case to the mental health docket. So my advice to the dad who came with us Monday is what? So if he's still in the jail, there's a mental health team that's in the jail. So the advice would be to, to contact the mental health team. Is there a particular person? Uh, is the correct care solutions? Is the uh, vendor, the mental health vendor at the jail? And they will also make recommendations. And the thing about the uh, mental health docket, you have the Commonwealth attorney, the public defender, uh, the jail team are all meeting at pre-court to discuss the diagnosis, uh, the current circumstances, the living arrangements. All of that is discussed at the mental health docket. So the first step would be to contact the current care solutions. I have a question here. I'm looking at an internal uh, city uh, memo from David Hicks uh, to the city attorney, Alan Jackson, dated July 18, 2012. Uh, a sentence reads uh, The plan, referring to this plan, is to be reviewed and voted upon by the Board of Juvenile Justice at the September 12th board meeting, uh, taking the of the state Board of Juvenile Justice. If an approved plan is not submitted to the DJJ board, then no additional funding will be released to the city. I think that's a different paper. Is that, oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let me, the chair is out of order. So duly noted. Uh, I'm trying to plow ahead here. Is there any, uh, let me put this out for you. Any more questions? Uh, Public hearing, does anyone uh, come forward to speak to 2012-172 uh, uh, regarding the criminal justice uh, service $75,000 grant? Uh, we'll bring it back to the committee for discussion. Uh, yes, Dr. Last question, Dr. Gill, how soon will the person be forward? How soon will the person come forward? We've already selected the person. Oh, as soon as wonderful. this goes before council, we're ready to start their first September 24th. Thank you. Thank you. Move to advance, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you, Mr. Jewell. I would second that, Mr. Chair. Chair uh, concurs with that, so we'll send this forward to council with our recommendation for approval. Resolution number 2012-R120 to approve the city's the city's plan to, of service under the Virginia Juvenile Community Criminal Control Act. The paper is reported. Thank you. Someone in the administration to discuss this paper. I'm here to talk about that paper as well. Yeah, that is still now. <laughs> this paper is for your consideration in order for us to uh, uh, continue with our community crime control plan uh, to partnership uh, with the Juvenile Domestic Relations Board, the Court Service Unit, and our agency. Currently, uh, that the funding uh, for this plan is $347,680. However, the city also support these programs by adding, by um, budgeting $459,000. These programs include uh, services such as outreach, electronic monitoring, even recording, sex offender treatment, and substance abuse treatment. And so the plan is a biennial plan, and we're at that point that we have to uh, get the appropriate signature letter of support for 2013 and 14. 2013 funds are ready to be um, uh, uh, received as, as part of our revenue, and then next year we will get an, uh, the second $347,000. So it's an annual amount. Uh, it's the, uh, it'll be effective actually on September 1st, which we've already passed September 1st. So as soon as we get it through the process, we'll be able to receive those funds. there are uh, any questions? I guess let me go ahead with, with mine here. The last thing that you had indicated, 
another memo in here that uh, uh, from uh, Mr. Marshall to Angela Valentine. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of this September 30th day, uh, uh, Mr. Hicks here had said that uh, this was to be, the plan was to be reviewed by the uh, Virginia Board of Juvenile Justice at their September 12th meeting and if it wasn't approved that no additional funding would be released to the city. Are we in a... We're ready to move forward. Um, as, we, as we sit here today, uh, does the city have access from the previous year's fiscal funds or are we funding these out of general fund dollars until we get this plan approved or yeah well well we have to the city pays <coughs> 59 so we're paying for it out of that amount that's the maintenance of effort and actually we have to use that first uh -huh. and then this money will kick in uh, so there's no fiscal harm no so no lapse in services okay great and how would the uh, uh how does this relate to the uh, juvenile uh, uh, justice or the detention center. Is this, uh, those funds are for housing separately and the other services of the group are provided through this, this grant or? Well, these are services for kids that come in contact not necessarily housed at the uh, detention center because these are uh, kids that are in the community. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's no, uh, overlap of funding. I think uh, we were going to receive funds as my request was to fix this presentation, but not as as uh, the match would be one for one to house uh, individuals should we have our own facility, I think is what what he was saying on that. So I was just trying to, to ascertain how that related to that okay. telling me that it, it doesn't and that one is the Detention center itself and the other is just, is just any contact mm -hmm. with the juvenile justice mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you for uh, clearing that up for me. Uh, is there any other, any other questions? Members of the committee? I'll put this up for a uh, comment. Is there anyone who wishes to address the committee uh, with regards to this resolution? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the committee for discussion. Second. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Jewell. The chair concurs with that, and we will uh, move that forward with a recommendation for approval. Okay, let's see. Do we have Item number one, please. We passed that by. Uh, that was uh, continued for 30 days uh, after the request was taken. And the patron is? Ms. Robertson's. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she'd be happy to discuss it all time. <laughs> We've been moving this one down the road for a while, haven't we? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't think it's passed the uh, special use person that said we still have on the dial. Well, the jail, the the jail will be built by the time this darn thing passes, and I'm just figuring out what we can do to move it along. Uh, do we know why it's being held up? I, I can't speak Anybody? to that. I do not speak with Ms. Robertson myself. Uh, can you? Thank you. Oh, yes, please. And I haven't spoken to Ms. Robertson on this either, but what I just heard today is that we're establishing a position for alternatives to incarceration with a committee. I, mean, I think maybe we need to figure out so we need two committees. One that you are self Right. It's from the dentist. Yeah. I think we need to have that discussion. And will that? I'm sorry, yes, uh, Dr. Hill. Dr. Hill, will that committee have citizen um, representatives on? The jail review committee? Yes. It's a possibility. We have not uh, established a uh, compilation, but we could certainly consider that. So, okay. so maybe there's even more important. 
I just would hate to see us in a position where we have two committees doing the same thing if you might have a yeah, I mean, we, we did that with the majority of the advisory board. We did the same thing with the, with the affordable housing trust fund. Um, we were working on a couple of different tracks. So, uh, yeah, uh, we had to dovetail the system. Well, we probably also bring in the victims uh, with this organization. So that, that, that's a new uh, vacancy right there for that one. So the recommendations that the committee has um, are the committee for criminal justice board. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 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 Right. 
Yeah, we'll keep it. Very good. So as soon as I get our application, it will be on the single agenda too. Okay. Okay, thank you. So Mr. Taylor, first that. Uh, uh, only I'd like to call your attention to the uh, three-page document from the department uh, in regard to 2013 session of the General Assembly agenda. Look at the third page. If you'd like the committee's input on um, how would you like the staff to proceed on the, the items listed and uh, if there are others that you might wish to add. Yes, yes. I guess that's for you to go over. Yes. But I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, uh, yes uh, Mr. Chair and uh, Mr. Taylor, uh, just a point of clarification on few of the items. So, for example, number 23, uh, I'm just wanting to be clear whether this is uh, rest automatic restoration of rights after that the society has been paid. Uh, if that is in fact the case, then I would be very amenable to uh, <coughs> the of such a thing. But I can't tell. Them. Okay. So if I get something. do that. And I think uh, the difference here would be uh, that, if I'm not mistaken, it's a proposal for an amendment to the Constitution rather than uh, a piece of legislation. But that's what I think that's what it would take to have one of the resolution. That would be an amendment to, to the Constitution? State to the state. state. Yeah. Because it's not uh, the case. So if that is not Uh, it is not a pretty sight, and uh, 
of the state, as I said, takes all the money from this activity and the locality is left to uh, police the situation. What are we talking about? Well, I'm talking about, uh, what are you talking about? I'm sorry, when you say what we're talking about. What, what's the defect that we're trying to fix? Out of the, the, you, we're you trying to it's an enormous amount of cost of police. Yes. I don't understand what you mean. I'm saying that the calls for, for service related to various activities outside of these uh, establishments and or... You're saying people are hanging out around this not, not just state that. store? No, hanging out is not against the law. Uh, I'm trying to understand what you're talking about. What, what is causing us money? What's costing us money? To have police officers on duty looking at this particular issue when there could be more serious things happening on the street. So the dollar uh, effects of that, I guess somebody's on payroll, they're on payroll, but it would seem to me, I would say, a more efficient use of our resources if the state would, would help in a manner in which it is getting all of the money from this activity and the, and the locality is getting no help. They want to the revenue, then, you know, that's another discussion, but I doubt that we're going to open up that door. Okay. Uh, what I found is that every district is different. Amazing. It can be very different. When you you have a problem that a ABC store or yeah. a convenience store or a juke joint, I'm trying to learn what is the problem that's causing us to have to send police officers to spend time and money. I'm, I'm missing your point. Well, relative to, I guess, when we pull this here, Blue House, you may be familiar with the RNS market, uh, it took the uh, FBI, and I want to say the ATF, to arrest the operator of this establishment for drug distribution. Uh, where, I mean, you would think that ABC would have had a clue as to what this activity was, but the fact is that their enforcement arm almost exclusively deals with underage drinking. Mm -hmm. And these other activities get little or no enforcement from uh, ABC. So I'm, that's what I'm looking for, is if at least we can have it. If the state has made the decision, and I believe they have, that we're going to squeeze every nickel we can out of this activity, then what I'm saying is that this, that this locality needs to leave as to the enforcement. That's all I'm asking. Okay. I had no clue where you were going with this uh, with regards to what needs enforcement. Right. Um, I mean, there could be situations where there's a significant amount of intimidation that goes on to, to the shopkeepers and so forth that allows some of this activity to continue. In fact, someone was arrested for drug distribution leads me to think that that wasn't the case in this particular uh, situation. But, uh, I had uh, constituents uh, been in the community for 30, 40 years saying, you know, this is out of control up there. Uh, so it wasn't like somebody new moved into the neighborhood and said, you know, what's this going on here? This was a sustained uh, change in, in, uh, in what was going on outside of this market for the past couple of years. And obviously, it turned out very good. So that's that's what I'm looking for. I get uh, uh, some constituents concerned about it. It hampers our revitalization efforts for the, the corridor. Oh, I'd be the first, first to agree that it needs to be cleaned up. I doubt seriously if anybody was really checking it or trying to eradicate it, it would not take away close to two years when it's too easy to find out what's going on in the neighborhood. Uh, if somebody really looking um, uh, I contend that underage drinking uh, can be abated by increasing our recreation activity in the city, increasing our staff, increasing the facilities, increasing the program because we are in dire straits with regards to delivery of recreational services. So I'm always reluctant to, to go for the throat uh, for enforcement when we are part of the car. Recreation ought to be as free as law enforcement. Yet we we charge on our babies right now twenty five dollars a child to play PB football. It's insane. 
We got the money. So I'm hesitant of all <coughs> first go for enforcement when we can do other kind of integrative kind of things that I might afraid that we cause the problem. That we won't do. Uh, well I think there's adults involved in this activity. And just to show you how lax ABC is and how they don't connect the dots, the owner of this facility will just say, uh, we have an ordinance for nuisance properties, and the fact that this owner, I assume, said, you know, I don't know what's going on here, uh, and then ABC has already granted the license to the next outfit that, 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 uh, that leased this property. So that's what I have a serious problem with, I and mean, it just seems like it. Again, I'd love to share some revenue with them, but I doubt that day.
But if this location is cited by so many times that you can't have an ABC license here uh, for a period of time, that I don't think would also incentivize the, the owners of these properties. To for what is worth, yeah. and I can't remember his name right now, but the head state inspector of ABC is a former police captain right here in the city. Uh, okay. I can't remember his name, well known name. Uh, uh, if you contact them, I'm not sure he could be a bit more digital with his people. Whatever it was. Okay. Right. Thank you. So, that, uh, so we're going to amend that here to talk about um, licenses and, and uh, the effect of, or excuse me, the, uh, some penalty sanctions with regard to, uh, to arrests and uh, calls for service. I'm not sure we get away from calls of service that there might be some competitor, you know, calling up and get some somebody fucked up. So they can do it. So, right, the, the things will have to probably be a little bit higher bar than just that. But. All right, thank you. Is there any other uh, public safety uh, items to be added to the general assembly agenda? Yes. I would like to submit some uh, subsequent to this meeting, but I'd like to uh, a question that I guess it's Ms. Chair and President. We are uh, promulgating our policies for the general assembly, and we also at this time put forth those that we'd like to see for ourselves that are not known across the street that we'd like to see. Not in just at the same time. I mean, there will be a badge that will go across the street, but a badge for us to consider ourselves. Because uh, I have a couple. Um, and then, too, would the, if they deal with the city, why would we put them in the city package? We would not. I'm just I mean, why would we? To go? No, because they don't require okay. that. Yeah. But I just, we didn't have a time frame in which we were putting for it for us to entertain this locality. No, no, no. No, 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 but I was trying to remind you, you know, we had, I know we didn't do any time, but mm -hmm. since we're doing it to go across the street and find an opportunity to say we have anything we want to look at for ourselves. And either way, I can just submit them separately, or mm -hmm. since we didn't have time specifically looking at to make sure we do a little bit of we for ourselves as well. We just thought it would be, um, with the limit on how many, initiatives each delegate can put in. The sooner we get this package together, the better chance we have of getting paid. If you wait, as we've done in the past, till the end of November, beginning of December, they're already booked up pretty much, so that's when we're sitting at this push to do this in the beginning of October.